the inverter, in this case the YC overall solar system, is to convert the DC power that is generated by the solar panels into AC power, which can be utilized by the power grid. The YC500 is a grid-tied microinverter. The APS YC500 functions as two inverters built into a single case and has the following characteristics. It's a single phase inverter, but given its architectural flexibility, it can also be used in both 208 volt and 277 483 phase applications. It is best suited for PV modules in the 180 to 310 watt range and its total rated output power is 500 watts. The maximum number of units per 120 240 volt 20 amp on a circuit is 7 or a total of 14 PV modules and the maximum number of units per a 208 volt 20 amp circuit is 6 or a total of 12 PV modules. The YC500 uses the power line communication or PLC protocol to communicate with the energy communication unit, the ECU, and while the warranty varies depending on pricing, it has been engineered for a design life of 25 years. This is a simplified typical residential single phase system diagram. Things to note here are that as described previously, the YC500 is assigned to two PV modules, typically described as side A and side B. When hooking up the AC cabling, there are three conductors, the red L1, the black L2, and then the neutral. Here is a picture of the YC500 showing its associated cabling. It's important to note that the YC500 does not use a trunk cable for AC distribution, but rather are daisy chained together in series. The top cables in the photo are the AC cables, and the bottom four, two on each side of the inverter, are the DC input cables. Additional components that are important to a successful installation are the AC branch cable ends, or WIPs, and the end caps. The AC branch cable ends have a connector at one end for attaching to the first YC500 in a circuit, and bare wires, red L1, black L2, and white, neutral, at the other end for connecting into a junction box. The end caps, as their name implies, are weatherproof termination caps that lock on to the last YC500 female AC connector in the circuit as protection against the elements. The YC500 is compatible with both 60 and 72 cell PV modules with a voltage range of 22 volts to a maximum of 55 volts. It requires the 22 volts to energize. Anything below that voltage level on the input side of things and the inverter will not power up. Okay, with all the background information out of the way, it's time to start walking through the actual installation procedures. Step 1. With the racking system installed, lay out and mark on the racking where the YC500s are going to be installed, keeping in mind where the PV module junction boxes are going to be located and avoiding any other possible obstructions. Then go back and install the inverters using your marking as a guide. Do not mount the inverter where it'll be exposed to direct sunlight. Under the PV panels is preferred, where the panels are providing shade for the inverters. While the, just as a note, as a safety measure and out of self-preservation, the YC500 will shut itself down when it reaches the upper limit of its operating temperature range and it is extremely important to allow at least three quarters of an inch between the roof or mounting surface and the bottom of the inverter. This spacing is important for cooling airflow to reach all surfaces of the inverter. Step two is making sure that the inverters are properly grounded throughout the system. A note about grounding. The YC500 is not internally grounded within the chassis, so it requires an external ground. Depending on your jurisdiction, and it's always best to check with your local inspector to get their ruling on the subject, you can either use a grounding washer when attaching the inverter to the rail of a well-grounded racking system, or you can use the grounding lug on the YC500 to string bare copper wire to an appropriate system grounding location. Step 3 involves installing the AC branch circuit junction box in a suitable location as close to the end of a branch of modules as possible. 
you'll have approximately 12 feet of AC cable to work with, 6 feet of cable associated with the last inverter in the branch, and 6 feet of AC connector cable, sometimes called a whip. Make sure to wire the conductors. L1 is red, L2 is black, and neutral is white. With the inverters mounted on the racking system, the grounding all sorted out, and junction boxes installed in the appropriate locations, it's time to connect the microinverters together on the AC side. First of all, plug the AC female connector of the first inverter to the male connector of the next inverter, and so on, to form a continuous AC branch circuit. Also a word of caution when making these connections. Do not string the AC cabling so tight that it is placing a stress on the connection points. Once the AC connections have been made, you're ready to move on to step five, installing the protective end cap onto the open AC connector on the last inverter in each branch circuit. Step six, place the PV modules on the racking system and connect the DC leads from each of the PV panels to the microinverters, making sure that the connectors are securely snapped into place. The LED on the microinverter will flash green three times when DC power is first applied, indicating a successful connection. This startup indication only happens when the DC power is applied to the first side of the connected inverter. Check the DC connectors if you don't see the green startup LED flash. With the PV modules and inverters in place, and all connections thoroughly checked to make sure that they're secure, you're ready to energize the system. First, turn on the AC circuit breaker associated with each microinverter AC branch. Next, turn on the main utility grid disconnect. Note, as a safety precaution against potential islanding, the system will not start producing power for a full five minutes after it detects the presence of the grid. Now that the system is energized, a few words about the inverter LED indicator lights. The inverters have a number of LED indicators that are extremely useful in determining system status beyond system startup. Assuming all is good with the system once it has been energized, the LED will flash green slowly every 10 seconds, meaning the inverter is producing power and communicating with the ECU as expected. If the LED is flashing green quickly every two seconds, the inverter is producing power but not communicating with the ECU. This is a normal condition if you have not installed an ECU as part of the system design. A flashing red LED is an indication that the inverter is not producing power. Check the DC leads to make sure that they are securely connected. A solid red LED indicates the inverter has detected a ground fault. 